What is up everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival 2024. This is episode number six. Last episode, we built these defense platforms and we did a little bit of upgrades to our rovers and we did some other stuff with the uh, with the Coffini outpost over there. This episode, we are going to fix our power problems and we actually don't have power problems, but we're gonna fix them before they become problems. Uh, these things are great, but I'd like to get some sort of solar solution that had a lot of S's in it uh, built over there. And I talked about it sort of in the middle of last episode or maybe toward the end but we're essentially going to make a tunnel that goes from this base all the way over there and then we're going to have big solar towers up there and the reason we're going to go all the way over here is because as we get a little higher on this mountain here the sun is a little bit more visible so having some sort of solar tower right here would be a little bit better than having one say inside our little valley uh, so that's what we're going to do in this episode we're also going to work a little bit more on these defense platforms maybe get a second one built up over there and we are going to get more assemblers built up because the assembling is a little bit too slow i'm looking at this blank wall right here because the assemblers right behind it but um getting maybe four or so assemblers built up I think would be a really good idea. So those are the things we're gonna be doing in this episode. Let's start right out with the solar towers. So uh, I think this is gonna be weird because we wanna put it all the way over there and we wanna put it inside some sort of, um, we wanna connect it to the base. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna build a tunnel that's gonna go all the way over there. And I've thought a little bit about this and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right here, this connection. So this is our, our uh, this is our hallway right here. We're gonna build a stairwell that's gonna go down just a little bit and then we're gonna have this start going out that way. And it's gonna go about, I don't know, 600 meters until it gets over there. And then it's gonna go up and that's gonna be where we're gonna have our uh, solar platform. So let's get started on how we want this to go. I'm gonna start by removing this right here. Remove all those. There we go. And we are going to, I'm going to reattach that right there because we're going to remove these. Uh, we don't want them anymore. We're going to get rid of them. Okay, there we go. And we're going to essentially put our stairwell. Um, do I want to put it here or do I want to put it one further? That's a good question. Actually, I've been thinking about having a stairs here, but you know, instead of having it there, why don't we have it down here? Because we already have a staircase going down and we want to build it down here. Why not build it somewhere like right here where it just goes straight into the mountain right there and it just keeps going until it gets over around there where we're going to have our uh, solar tower. So we're going to start our tunnel right here and we're going to go into the mountain like this and we're basically going to start going straight with this now we'll probably end up putting like a little bit of a room underneath the base here but when it gets to about here it's just going to become this very long tunnel that's going to go all the way out there uh and that that's it now it might be on a separate grid i'm not sure um some people have said that we could do multiple grids by using connectors so that we have them connected to each other and then the the power would actually flow through um just fine but they wouldn't technically be one grid and that way we can have that one oriented a little differently so i don't know how we're going to do that i think we might end up doing it like that but for now, we're just gonna go straight. So how are we gonna go straight actually? This is an interesting thing. So I've done this before in another series and some of you have mentioned it in the comments as well. But if you wanna go straight while you're digging, you can go ahead and get a projector. You can place it down on the ground like so. Let's go ahead and build that up if we can. I'm gonna grab some, some goodies. All right, here we go. There's the projector and there is a control panel so that we can access the projector. Now, before we do anything else, what I want to do is I want to dig in a straight line. So we're going to need some sort of template. Now, I already have one inside my thing, but I'm going to show you guys how to make one as well. So if I take a couple steel plates and build a very long line of blocks like this, we're going to build one. I don't know how many blocks. We'll count at the end. Let's just keep going for a, a, a long while here and see how far we get. Okay, there we go. This is a kind of ridiculous line, but it's a hundred blocks long exactly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control B on that. It's gonna open up my my uh, my blueprint here, and I'm gonna go and rename this into uh, Template Straight Line uh, 100 Blocks. Okay, there we go. Next, I'm gonna go back through here and remove all this stuff. And there we go. It's removed. Now I can go inside our uh, projector here, and I can select our template of 100 blocks long. So there's our 100 block long. You see I already had a 30 block one, but I wanted one that's a little bit longer there. So there's our 100 block long template and it's actually going to the side there. So I'm gonna turn it here. We'll use build uh, build vision here. Change the pitch one like that. I'm gonna change the uh, forward offset by one. I'm gonna change the vertical offset by one. And I'm gonna change the horizontal offset by one as well. So now what we have is essentially an invisible line that's gonna go all the way this way for a hundred blocks. 
So that is one really easy way to know where you're digging. So you can always dig in a straight line. Uh, once we've got 100 blocks, if we want to go further, we can just move this and uh, and, and reposition it. Um, oh, it's actually becoming nighttime, which is fine because we're going into the mines. We're, we're going to be digging down there. Um, but 100 blocks. Now, I know for a fact that we want to go about, uh, I believe it's 300 blocks. Because if I look at this, we're about 500, 600 away. Yeah, over here would be about 600 away. One block is 2.5 uh, meters. Uh, so it's going to be about 200 blocks, roughly. All right, let's get started with our digging. We have many, many blocks to go. This is going to take a little while, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a task. I think it'll look cool in the end, though. All right, we've got a couple of blocks, and we already have a pretty decent straight line tunnel. Without doing this method, I in the Pertam series, I did plenty of tunnels without using this, and it was very difficult. It's always very difficult to figure out what is a straight tunnel and what is not. So this is good. This is basically what I, where I want my roof to be inside here. We're currently we're just building a straight line, but we're gonna come back through and we're gonna we're gonna build like a nice tunnel here with uh, with actual design elements, with lights and stuff like that. At this point, the tunnel is so long we can't even see the start of it when we're all the way over here. We have to come all the way over here before we can see the start. And maybe that's because it's nighttime. The light is not uh, doing us any favors. But is that? Okay, that's just ice. I thought that was like a material or something. Let's continue along this way. We're about 128, which is not even close to 100 meters, or 100 blocks away, rather. 100 blocks away would be about 2.5, or 250 meters, rather. I am an engineer and I'm digging a hole. <laughs> taking a tunnel, technically. Diggy, diggy tunnel. Diggy, diggy tunnel. Brothers of the Moon Unite, dig, dig, dig a tunnel. You know, it'd be kind of nice as well to do some uh, exploration. I don't know that we're going to get to it in this episode because we have kind of a full roster here doing the, uh, the the solar stuff and also the, you know, the, the defense platforms. Um, but doing some exploration would be cool. Maybe find a couple more bases that we can attack or something like that. And hopefully the AMG Sandstorm. Next episode, maybe we'll do a little bit of exploration. I'm planning to do... Hey, we reached 100 blocks. And you'll see it is actually not fully 250 meters. But maybe that's because th this is a little bit forward from the uh, from where we started. Um, but next episode, I'm planning to do some stuff with the... Uh, I'm planning on doing some stuff with the PAM Auto Miners. So that'll be the episode of automated mining and getting the outpost set up where the parallax base was. Uh, so I think that'll be kind of a fun one. Okay, so we are going to use, I think, maybe the old school, not the sci-fi, but the old school interior walls for this bottom area, at least for the floor. So let's start going this way, and we're going to keep going this way. Um, pretty much the entire way. It's, it's, it's going to be a task, but... And then we'll have to do this probably one more time, so that we can get um, closer to where we want to build our thing. Alright, I think that's going to be good. We got all the way over here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go this way just a tiny bit. I'd like to put our new projector right about there. Okay, this goes in, and we are going to reposition it like so, and let's continue here. We probably have to go another 100 blocks, so we might be in the zip code. Oh, it looks like we have reached the end of our thing, so we've gone another roughly 100 uh, meters. So let's go ahead and put a GPS marker in here. I'm going to put new from current position. This is a diggy, diggy tunnel. There we go. Okay, and we're going to go check out where this is in terms of, uh, in terms of above. All right, now I know it's dark, but looking around here at the uh, at where we are, I think this is around where we want to be because it's pretty much the peak of the mountain and it's it's like a perfect place for us to go. Now we're almost there. We just need to go a little bit further. And so I made a marker, dig to here, and we're going to continue digging to there until we're right under it. So let's continue. No, no, clang, clang till Brooklyn. All right, we should be. Yeah, we're okay. We're basically directly under dig to here. So we're going to stop right there and we're going to make a, a little room there. So let me bring all the blocks over to here and uh, and that'll be our, our finishing area. <laughs> the tunnel continues and it will continue further. It's going a lot farther than I thought it was going to go. But uh, yeah, because I only thought it was going to go about 500 meters. And in reality, it's going about 600 <laughs> or 700. So, whoops, but uh, it's gonna look cool in the end. That's, that's the entire goal. All right, now that we're at our mark, basically, I mean, it's, it's right there, it's very close. Actually, if I go uh, maybe one more block, I'll, I should be at it. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this is directly under it, and this, by the way, is why we dig with a line, because when, we, when I don't have the line, look what happened. I've made a very 
diagonal area. But it doesn't matter because this entire area is going to turn into like a little room right here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep that bit attached to the base. We're going to pressurize this entire area. And then this room is going to be the final pressurized area. And it's going to go up to the top right there in an unpressurized zone. So let's get ready to go up to the top. We'll build the room a little bit later. Right now, we're just kind of getting the stuff set up. But anyway, since it is easier to dig down than up, I'm going to go ahead and put my projector right here, aiming all the way up right there. We're going to go back to the entrance here and we're going to dig down from the top instead of up from the bottom. There we go. It's like a little, it's like a, a, a beacon telling us where to go. Okay, so that is actually pretty straight. I mean, we could technically go on one grid. Let me see. If I were to press B, which would align it with the gravity, that's very, er, let me press B again. That's local align. This is free placement. So, okay, that's local line and that's gravity. So it's actually very similar. Some people were worried in the comments that maybe it would be a little bit off. It wouldn't be as aligned with the uh, with the with the planet, but it looks like it actually is. Um, so maybe I will actually keep this on one grid, which means I'll be able to keep it pressurized all the way until we get up here. Um, so let's let's just go straight down right here. I'm gonna aim down. Oh, something spawning. Of critical energy. Oh, that's a reaver. Oh, shoot. That is our first reaver. Oh, this is not good. We do not have very, very good uh, in the way of defenses. Let's hope that this guy doesn't come destroy us. We have to get inside and uh, oh, what do we want to do? Uh, we have a weapon over there. We have these weapons as well. These guys should be able to take it out. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's get over here and hopefully we get in one of these weapons. Uh, okay. Assault turret. Boom. Control me. Boom. Where's the reaver? Right here. Turn. And let's hope that this goes well. Oh, I'm so scared. Okay. It's firing at something. Do I... Can I... What's what my What's my range? Okay, let's hit it right here. Miss. I hope the other guy starts engaging at some point. Yep, the other guy's engaging. Good. Let's fight right here. Right here. Come on, one more. One more. Fire. Oh my gosh, I'm, this is why I really shouldn't be controlling this. I should let the Reavers control this, shouldn't I? But it's more fun if I control it. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting for it to stop. Fire once. He's above my effective range. Come on. Okay, come on. This is a good shot. Fire, yes! Okay, we got hits. We got hits. Reloading. I really should have made this guy's more ammo, I think. He's above my effective range. Uh, maybe we'll hit him once more for good luck. Oh, no, he's not. Good hit, good hit. Uh, that was really close. He, I think he's falling right now. I don't think he's got much more in the way of survivability. He's kind of flying away, and I think that's totally fine. Yeah, he's gone down right there. Okay, we have dealt with our first Reaver, but we're not without consequences here. It looks like he's done quite a bit of damage right here. This is, this is a wake-up call. This is a big wake-up call that we need more stuff. We need more defenses, which is what we're planning on doing in this episode, to be fair. We're adding more defenses on the other side. But I did not expect to get a Reaver this early. That shows that they're still out there. They're still lurking, and they're still waiting for us to, uh, to mess up. Okay. Let's check out the damages. It should be daytime kind of soon, but it looks like we have a lot of damage into here. They've done a little bit of damage to our Mocha Mobile, but not too much. Not a crazy amount. We can fix this. Um, it's a good thing I sprung for the, the armor here. Maybe not as good of a thing I sprung for the weaker <laughs> armor. But, um, okay, they've killed that as well. Uh, it looks like they killed one of our... They actually killed all of our power, so it's a good thing we're working on that right now. We need to get that set up again. Uh, but yeah, we definitely have some repairs to do, which we're going to be doing in this episode. We're going to get everything back up to ship shape. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Um, the River Slayer actually went down over there, so that's okay. Fair enough. All right, well, let's go ahead and finish this over here. We need to sort out our power problems, and I think this is the easiest way to do so. So let's continue digging down right here and get this thing hooked up, because once we have this up and running, that's going to be a huge step forward for us. So crouch down and just start digging down in a straight, a straight uh, line here. And here we go. Okay, we've finally reached the bottom there. That took a long time. That's a lot more blocks than it looks like. Let's go ahead and remove this and remove that. And we're going to go ahead and dig straight up from here. Now, eventually, we're going to go... We're, we're, we'll put, like, a staircase in here. Um, and we might even do that in this episode. But for now, we're just going to go straight up with one of these. And 
uh, get it connected so that we can get our power. Because remember, the Reaver just took out our power. That's not good. We need to get it back online. There we go. Okay, we're out right there. All right, so wh what's going to happen from here is we're going to actually use uh, armor blocks for this instead of those ones right there. And we're essentially going to make a little pedestal. So this is going to be the bottom right here. Boom, right there. And it's going to go up. Oh, the sun's coming up. Nice. Okay, we can finally see where we are. We can see our base over there uh, and everything. So we're going to have a little pedestal here. And it's probably going to be about uh, maybe that tall. Uh, and then the way we're going to do this... We're going to have our solar tower be about right here. So these are going to be built using these blocks right here. They have um, cylindrical columns and it's going to go up right there. Now we're probably only going to have about three of them here, uh, which I think is going to be fine. So we'll have one right here and maybe we'll have one over there and one over there. Okay, and it's essentially going to look like this. So we're going to have our one right there. We're going to have our other one over here, uh, right about there going up. And it, you'll see it's a couple blocks away from this one right here, just for like kind of an aesthetic sort of vibe and then this one over here is also going to be a little bit back from that one so we'll have three solar towers right there each with a bunch of solar panels and even if they're all facing the same direction they can go at least 10 blocks out which would be uh i think five solar panels on each side so i think that's going to be a pretty good setup right there for our solar panels we're probably only going to build the center one today and how tall are we going to make these i don't know for sure but we're going to go up a little bit let's do how big are you one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we'll go 12 13 14 15 and i want to see how ridiculous that looks yeah i think that's actually pretty good having our solar towers up there because that means even if the sun's coming up this way it should be able to see all the way onto over there We'll go rotor on top, just like that. Then we'll go hinge on top of that, like so. And finally, uh, what I'm gonna do actually real quick before we do anything else, I'm gonna do a hinge lock, because if I don't, this thing's gonna go wild and, and start flipping all over the place if I start placing anything on it. But we'll go hinge lock like that. I'll place, I'm gonna place our first heavy armor block because I really want this armor block right here to be more powerful. I will put a camera on the top of this thing so that it can see the light. And finally, I believe all I need now is going to be a hinge controller. So right there, uh, or not a hinge controller, a turret controller. So I'll put my turret controller right at the base right there. Okay, and we're going to do the same for all those, but this is going to be our first one. Now, the way I'm going to do these is going to be very similar to how I did the um, the ones in the Dune Power Bank. It's going to look similar, but it's it's a little bit more uh, simple, right? It doesn't have two hinges or two rotors on either side. It's only got the hinge here. So we're going to go uh, every two blocks is a solar panel. So there's two solar panels, three solar panels, four solar panels, five solar panels, which should give us about the span of this. So we'll do the same here. All right, this is our setup right here uh, for our solar panels. And I'm actually gonna use the colored solar panels because they fit perfectly for what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna position them like this, and then I'm gonna double them up like so. So we're gonna use our colored solar panels like that. And once this thing tilts forward, it's, it's basically gonna be looking like a big square probably, but I think it'll look cool. Um, in fact, what we might do for now is we might only do three of these like that and then like that, and then we might remove this because it looks a little cooler. So three of them like that, and then same thing on this side, and then same thing on the top as well. There we go. What do you guys think about that? That is a solar panel right there. Now, once, once this thing is actually facing the sun, it'll actually follow it right there. So, and in fact, in order to get it to face the sun, all we need to do is build this up, build, here, I'll, I'll right click for build planner, build that up. We need to build this up right here, right click for build planner, and we need to build this up right here, right click for build planner. And actually, we need to build this camera up as well. Right click for build planner. All right, give me a second, I'm gonna go grab those materials and I'm gonna come back and build that up. Okay, there's the rest of our hinge, and then we need uh, some detector components for this. So we need to go get some nickel. Before we do though, I wanna go check out the Reaver Slayer over here. I don't have any weapon or anything, but I don't think I had any weapons because it wasn't shooting at me before. So let's check out what we have downed over here. Uh, did it just fall through the earth? No, it didn't. It's still there. It looked a little bit weird. <laughs> I've got a grinder out and I'm not afraid to use it. Let's check it out. It's just a crater. Hello? Ooh, some good materials here. Oh. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> it's just looking at me. All right, we're going to go ahead and, and grind this down. There's some good stuff for us here that we can grab. And... Um, 
and we can use this for our base to repair all the damage that he did. I expect that since we had one attack us, we're going to have more attack us eventually, so we need to start... Um, oh, we're full from that antenna. We need to start uh, worrying about that a little bit, I think. You know, I'm actually noticing there are some random blocks here. Oh, by the way, at the start of the fight, you might have noticed that I was freaking out, wondering what I should do. I was thinking I might go try to, like, build up one of those uh, attack drones super quickly. I found more parts of the Reaver. Um, but I eventually decided against it because I think it would have taken too long. Um, but we need to get some of those attack drones built up for sure. Uh, I was planning to do a rework of the attack drone at some point, um, maybe in an episode or two, but I think we're going to have to actually push that forward a little bit uh, so that we have some things to defend our base when the time comes. Um, okay, we got to go grab Nickel, so I'm going to fly there because we're trying to get this done quickly. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, we got the nickel, but we are very quickly running out of power, so... Uh, but we do have some solar cells built up, so let me run over here real quick and get a couple of these solar panels built up, if we can. Let's get this one right here, and get this one right here. And you know what? Maybe get this one right here, and this one right here. This one right here? Yeah, that one right there. With a full inventory, we're able to get, hopefully, one of these built up. Yes, there's one. Nice, and they're white <laughs> by, by default, so we'll have to change the color if we want them to be a different color than... Uh, then white, which we probably will. Maybe blue or something like that. There we go. There's our custom turret controller. Now all I need to do is plop into here. I need to go to my azimuth rotor and say that that should be rotor 3. And then I need to go to my elevation rotor and say that should be hinge. And then I need to go to my assigned camera and say that should be... Oh no, checkmate. <laughs> there we go. We should pick this camera right here. And finally, all I need to do is say... Always aim at sun. There we go. It's not going to do it quite yet because I need to set the rotor lock to off because I had locked them earlier. There's rotor lock and there is hinge lock. Oh, okay. They're going a little fast, but there we go. It's aiming at the sun. And now if I'm like over... Okay, I need to set inertia tensor as well because it's doing a little a little wiggle. Um, okay, so this one, I believe you set inertia tensor uh, somewhere here. Share inertia tensor on. And then I think I should be able to get this welded up. Perfect. Uh, can I get another? Another one. And we're looking good. We have three solar panels now aimed directly at the sun, which means if I hop into here and check out our solar, you'll see we have a lot of incomplete ones, but the ones we do have complete here are getting a decent amount of power. Not as much as the uh, as the spinny spinny turbines were um, yet. I mean, we're, we're getting... Probably these three combined are getting about as much as one of those little spinny turbines, but... Ideally, once we have, you know, all of those and then, you know, another tower and then like another tower, you know, it'll 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 be pretty good. I think that looks really cool. That's a that's a cool looking solar uh, thing. And in fact, I might I might span this out a little bit so it's a little farther apart because I'm noticing that if this is right here, it's going to cast quite a bit of a shadow on this one. So I might put this one over there and that one over there. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, but let's get back to this. We're going to continue working on this. We're going to get all that built up and then and yeah, we'll, we'll start fixing our base. Okay, let's continue adding solar panels here. I'd like to get at least this first half done. So the bottom half and uh, well, yeah, just the bottom half here. And then the top half we can leave unwelded until we decide that we need a couple more. But if we get these guys done, then this should be enough solar panels to give us power for a very long time. So let's try and get this uh, half of it done. Okay, there we go. Another solar panel up and running and a second one and a third one. Can we get even more? Nope, that's the same one. Yep, here's another one right there and one more. Yes, okay, we're able to get this one as well. Awesome. All right, that is one fourth of it done plus two of the, of the ones over here as well. Let's get these ones finished up and then we're gonna start coloring these guys. So I need one, two, three, four, I believe for there. So let's get those. We are able to get most of the stuff. Let's see if we can get some of these. One right there. Another one minus the solar cells right there. Then you as well. You guys are missing the solar cells and the girders. Okay, cool. Let's get the rest of the stuff. There's one, two, and three right here. Perfect. All right. That's all of our bottom solar panels right there. I'm actually going to expand this, I think. Uh, I don't actually have any steel plates. Uh, okay, ne never mind. We're not going to expand that quite yet then, but what I am going to do is I'm going to get a nice blue color and maybe look at what this would look like if I put it like that. I think that's pretty good. Just a nice blue color. Um, maybe we'll do something like that. We could even paint some of the other ones a different color if we want to, but for now, I think we're going to go with a nice blue color for our solar panels. 
like that. And that's gonna be what our little solar panel thing is gonna look like. That's a giant solar panel. That's giving us a lot of power. Actually, I'm curious how much power that is giving us. Um, we have the assembler going, but we can at least see how, how the battery's doing. So if I go to bat right here, uh, Warfare battery is the one I'm worried about, and it's fully recharged in three hours. It's getting an input of 1.82 megawatts. That's pretty good. And that's including the, the power, or that's not including the power that the assembler is using. So I'd say that's pretty good. And that's only half of one solar panel. We're going to have two more, of course. Okay, I want to go back to base and I want to do some repairs because we are in a bit of a situation over here with that. Our base is in shambles because of that Reaver attack. Uh, and we need to we need to deal with it. Um, it's not gonna be that hard. We'll start with the rover, I suppose. Or maybe we'll start with the outside stuff and then we'll work our way inside. So let's hop over here real quick. I would like some steel plates and some interior plates, if you can provide. Actually, those are in there. I'll grab some from here. There we go. Yep, we got some. Perfect. So now we're gonna put these, I'll grab the color of the base right there. We're gonna put these on the top, like so. And we'll go and repair all these as well. So uh, this right here, all the blocks that get broken, I think we're going to repair with a full on armor block. In fact, we might even remove all these. Okay, stuff's going to drop into the base, but I think it's fine. Uh, and replace them with steel plates because they are a little bit more. Um, uh, they take a little bit more damage, I think. OK, we require a door here. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to remove this one right here. and I'm going to put the door in front of this, I think. Let's remove you and remove you. A lot of these outer blocks, I think I'm going to repair, uh, replace with steel plates. Or light armor blocks, rather, so that we have a little bit more defense. All right, I was finally able to get this block placed. Let me put these down here for a second. And I was able to get this. I don't know why it was blocking me for some reason, because I had that button right there. I had to remove the button, and I'll, I'll replace it there in a second. But let me get this door built up real quick so that we can repressurize our base again. There we go, that should be this room pressurized, although I might replace all those up there with steel plates again, um, because I think that's probably for the best. All right, let's get this stuff welded. Our energy's a little bit low. We're gonna need to get a med bay set up at some point, um, which actually reminds me, I should, someone gave me this suggestion in a video, or in the comments, I should actually make a to-do list, and I think I will. Um, give me one second, let's get an LCD out here, uh, and I'll go for, we have all these cool ones here that add like slanted ones, but I think I'm just going to use a normal LCD. That's the big LCD. Whoops. There we go. One by one LCD panel. I'm going to go ahead and place that right there. Let's build it up here. And now what I can do is I can go in here and say what we want to do. So we need to get a med bay set up. We need to get a cargo room set up. We need to get assemblers set up. We need to get more power. Uh, we definitely need to get defenses done. There we go. And I'm, I'm just going to say that's it for now. So I need to go in here real quick and say, please show me text and images. And please make it nice and... I don't know. Like... That color. <laughs> that looks kind of cool. We'll do a font size larger so that we can actually see it. And we have room for like maybe one more item there. Perfect. Now we have a little to-do list that we can check off whenever we find things. And these are the things I just need to remember to do. And if we ever need more, we'll just put them up right there. Okay, there we go. At least the roof is looking good. Oh, we lost some blocks over here. Oh, they shot our engines. Okay. Uh, I simply cannot believe that they did all this destruction. Okay, I think the exterior is pretty much fully uh, enclosed again. The only thing I'm missing are would be these right here. These, these window blocks, which uh, we'll put up those a little bit later. Open tide, please don't attack my my solar panels. That's a scary look right there. He's going to crash. No, he's, he's very far away. But uh, anyway, yeah, things are looking good. Let me here. Let me pick up this stuff here so that we can use it. All right, there we go. There's the bulletproof glass. Now the base should be sealed again. Let me go ahead and I'm going to trigger that to go. I'm going to hop over here and close. Uh, and I'm going to open this rather. Should be able to just hit this button. It should do the thing. Thing. Oh, I, I need to... Oh, whoops. That's my bad. That is... Yeah. <laughs> whoops. I need to actually uh, name this door. Okay, I've got the airlocks back to a state that I wanted them in. So this... It, it does it again. Except the only problem is that this doesn't pressurize anymore because I think we've lost connection to our... Um, our, our oxygen stuff. So let's head over here and check that out. Uh, I'm gonna go in here. 
Yeah, okay, there's definitely a fire that we should probably put out sooner rather than later. Okay, we can't withdraw the motors. Let's go ahead and put that into production there. Um, and then see if maybe we can... Yep, there we go. We got everything. Fire is out, and I think things are back looking good. Let's head into here and check out what they've done to us. Uh, these aren't connected anymore. Oh, that was never connected, actually. Well, hang on now. You, you... Well, what I wanted to check is, can can you pressurize? No, you can't pressurize. Why can't you pressurize? There's something weird going on with our connection here, because our oxygen tanks have oxygen. Is it because I have them set to auto-refill? Oh, wait, no, this is telling me there's a hole in the wall. So where would that hole be? Let me go in here. Let me see if there's a hole in this room. Close. Yeah, there's no hole. I'm a little confused because it looks like everything is working fine. This room is perfectly, you know, uh, pressurized. Yet, some for some reason, that's not working. Did Do I need to reload and and uh, stuff like that? Here, let me reload. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay, we're back, and it looks like as soon as we reloaded, the pressurization started working again. So I don't know what was going on with that. That must have been a glitch. But all the pressurization is working now. Let's see if the rest of the base is following suit. Make sure we close these doors. And yes, this room is pressurized. And I tried to close that on myself, I guess. This room right here is also pressurized. Let's see if it works when I do this. Depressurize and open. Yes, okay. It's looking good. Same thing when I close it. Pressurize. And we're open. Okay, good stuff. So I guess if you guys run into that issue, just save and, uh, and, and reload it and it'll fix that for you. Going back into here, it looks like we still have a little bit of work to do here to uh, fix the stuff the Reavers did. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some steel plates. I'll grab a couple interior plates as well, and I'm gonna repair this stuff over here. Hope it doesn't make our uh, our rover bounce around a lot. And so this whole thing was sort of a wake-up call that we need a little bit more in the way of defense. We can't just use interior plates for everything. As nice as they look, they uh, they aren't as powerful. So uh, we need to keep that in mind as we're building in the future, which is good because we're going to build something in this episode as well. Uh, let's continue getting this stuff here. Okay, looking nice. I don't remember exactly what I had. Do you think it's a little rude that they attacked the poor Mokomobile here when it was just sitting around? Not really doing anything to harm anybody? There's not even a gun on this thing. <laughs> so, not the nicest thing that they could have done to, to attack our poor ship here. Let's hop in here, grab a little bit of energy. What the heck are we in, by the way? Wait, is this another glitch? Look at our, look at our cockpit! You can see right through it! What's going on? Is it, is it broken? Oh no, that must have been, okay, that was also a glitch. Wow, that's two glitches in one! What is going on? It's, it's kind of rare that I get glitches in Space Engineers. The game, I think, is not that glitchy. Uh, granted, you have an occasional death where you sort of like fly into the ground at a weird speed and it just kind of murders you. But it's, you know, <laughs> I think it's a little strange. There we go. There's our O2H2 generator back online. It looks like they destroyed our, our um, container as well. So I'll put some of this stuff into production. Maybe grab a couple of these. And there is our large container. And what are we missing as well? It looks like, there we go, remote control's back online, and they destroyed a couple of our little, uh, or one of our little wings here, so let's get that back up as well. There we go, everything should be back online. Looking at the ship, there's a couple of random white blocks that I've added here. Um, pretty much everything that you see in white is stuff that I have replaced. Oh, we can get that guy repaired. There we go. And I think with that, everything on the milk, oh wait, hang on, one light. And there we go, the Mokomobile is back. Back and looking good. Okay, now that we have the Mokomobile and the rest of the base back in good shape, and maybe a little bit more defended than it was before, I think the next thing I want to do is work on the uh, the defenses a little bit. So let's go ahead and close this door, or I didn't need to close that manually because we have buttons to do that for us. But we're going to go ahead and open this door. Let's grab a little bit of um, a little bit of power while we're here. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of work on our defenses over here. So what I want to do is I want to get this looking a little bit better, and I think I want to make this a little bit stronger as well. So currently we've got two assault cannon turrets, which are great. Um, however, they're they're not the fastest shooting. I'd like something that can shoot a little bit a little bit more continuously. We also have this. Um, big turret that's not going to actually see much use until we get uranium, so it's just going to kind of chill there looking good. Um, I'd like to add a couple of uh, of other turrets to this thing, and I'm thinking maybe some 
uh, uh, Gatling turrets. Some cheap Gatling turrets that we can just throw on the sides to help us out a little bit. All right, the way we're gonna position our Gatling turrets is we're going to come out with these uh, kind of slanted blocks here. Let's hope that's not a reaver spawning. This something. You're a parallax. That would suck if a reaver came from that direction. That's the worst direction for a reaver to come from uh, right now. So let's bring this back this way and we're gonna keep going back with this side thing. Cause what I essentially wanna happen is I have our main guns kind of in the middle here. I'd like to have these Gatling turrets kind of flanking a little bit, one right there and one right here. So that if something tries to shoot our main guns, it's not killing our little Gatling turrets. And if it tries to shoot the Gatling turrets, it's not killing our main guns. So they can't, you know, checkmate, right? Let's let's keep doing this. We're gonna go out um, maybe, I don't know how many blocks. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna have those there. We need to get them welded up so that they actually have armor and stuff. Then we will need to build this stuff up. Okay, let's see if we can get all of this welded up while we're here. So uh, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and number seven right here. And then maybe we can even get this Gatling turret welded up. Let's see. I doubt we're gonna have everything, but well, maybe we do. Oh no, okay, is this not connected? Oh, it's not connected anymore. Whoops, okay, I need to go back to base then for this. There we go, and the first one we're gonna weld up is actually gonna be our connection here, so that we have that now. Perfect. Let's head over here and do this one. There's one, two, three, four. Fifth one. Not quite the sixth one, but we were able to get some of it. There's our Gatling turret. There's the one under it. And can we get this last one right here? No, we're missing just a couple things. Okay. And perfect. Okay, we now have a Gatling turret that should be connected to the base. It's got a little bit of ammo. So that's good. Uh, I want to check uh, Gatling. Maybe we didn't make very many Gatling ammo boxes. So let's head over here and make um, a couple of these, maybe 20. Oh, because we brought them to war with us. That's probably why. Okay, we're going to need to make more then. We only have one. As for the other side, we're able to get most of the way there, but we're still missing a couple small steel tubes, and I think motors as well, when I go and look at some of these. Nope, oh, just small steel tubes. Okay, checking out the production, let's see what we have. Yep, it's making us all those small steel tubes that we needed, and we should now be able to get all the way there with a second Gatling turret. Nice! There's the connection. Okay, uh, so we now have our Gatling turrets built up. Let's run around and get some some of our uh, our armor built up. Anything that is not heavy armor will build, because we have a lot of um, armor on base. We still have 2,200 steel plates, so I'm just gonna go on a welding spree here and weld everything that I can. All right, I'm just putting a couple steel plates inside these turrets, which unfortunately were damaged by the attackers, the Reavers, but everything's looking good. We have a lot of this stuff welded up. I'm still going, um, not the heavy armor stuff. Ooh. What are you? Some goodies. Thank you very much. We can turn all this stuff into uh, into iron. That's 3.6k. And just plop it right into our refinery and you'll see that that's going to give us actually quite a bit of, of, of iron just there. All right, there we go. More guns and everything's looking pretty good. So from here, I think what we might do, this is not going to continue out this way. So you're not going to be able to run over there and check on that gun. You're going to have to actually go up here and then down there in order to do so, which is just a limitation, but I don't want to expand this, this giant area all the way over there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put windows on the back here, I think. Um, and since this is kind of a war room, we're going to use a different kind of window. Uh, if I search the windows, we'll check out these half windows right here. So I think we're going to end up using those. There we go. And we'll just put them like right here. Boom, 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 like that. And one, two, three, four, like that. This actually goes out five. Why does this one go out five? And the other one only goes out four. Oh, I think that's, that's by design, actually. That's fine. Okay. It's because this one is, the door is like on a... It's off center a little bit. So anyway, yeah, that's gonna be what our interior area is gonna look like. I'm not gonna pressurize it because it'd be impossible to pressurize this area uh, going up here. Okay, meanwhile, we're gonna have a tunnel that goes over here and I think this is where it's gonna start. So if I put this block right there, remove you and then add a, uh, a door. Actually, I'm not gonna add a door quite yet, but we're gonna have a, a duplicate of that door right here that's going to allow us to go from this place to that place. And the reason we're starting it out here is because we're gonna have a room probably right here, maybe like a med bay room or something like that is gonna be chilling right there. So uh, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna do a nice dome looking uh, thing. <laughs> I don't know exactly what we're gonna go for, but let's look at the windows we have at our disposal to see what we can do. Well, if we want to make it a dome looking thing, we could actually use these round windows here. 
which would look kind of give it an interesting look. It's kind of large, but think about it. If I had this go all the way this way to uh, to where we're going, is this an absurdly tall dome thing? Yes, yes it is. But am I fine with it? Yes, yes I am. There we go. Now, just like that, we're gonna have a cool little dome thing right here, which is going to uh, connect our base to our power Energy. thing. It kind of looks like an arrow a little bit. Energy is a little bit low, but uh, that's gonna be fine. So you can imagine this all being sort of built up kind of around here. You know, there'd be like a room over here. It's gonna continue like that, yada, yada, yada. You know, maybe even a room over here, I don't know. But then it's gonna look sort of like that right there, going all the way out to the to the edge over here. I like it. Let's see if we can actually weld up some of these. I'm gonna bring, uh, well, actually, I'm gonna grab some of these. I'm gonna do our control shift to try and grab a bunch of the stuff from here. There we go, that should be a couple of them. And let's see if I can run along here and weld up a couple of these guys. Uh, I don't know that we're gonna weld up the thing to the to our left there. Those require a lot of a lot of plates. Our energy is a little bit critical. We lose energy really fast. Uh, people in the comments have said that's because we are in zero oxygen and freezing temperatures. So our suit's having to do a lot of uh, internal heating for us. Um, so yeah, as long as we're outside in the elements like that, we're gonna be losing a lot of uh, a lot of power. But it should be fine. And as soon as I get a survive a uh, med bay up, uh, we will. That'll help a lot. Okay, there we go. Not bad. And how much are these, by the way? So the thing about these, these require large steel tubes, which are kind of a pain. But I can I can try to get some of them done. Let's see. I wonder how many trips it would actually take me to get one of these done. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so with one trip we can get one done. We can get. Okay, we can. Yeah. It's going to take a couple trips. Uh, while we're waiting for that stuff to craft, what are we missing for this? We're definitely not missing the iron, but we're, mi we're missing some nickel probably and some magnesium. Um, if I look into our refinery, what are we missing exactly? We have nickel, we're just missing the magnesium. So let's go and grab some magnesium. We're going to go buy jetpack, I think. And we're going to head on out over here. If I remember correctly, magnesium's this way. There it is. And we should have a magnesium hole somewhere right there. And then it sh I'm pranked. All right, GPS, help me out here. Magnesium, silicon, where, here. Ah, okay, here's the here's the actual magnesium hole, thank you. Okay, let's grab a full inventory of magnesium and that should let us build some more, more ammunition. And I really should bring my truck here, shouldn't I? I need to stop being lazy and, and bring it. I love, by the way, how even at our magnesium place, you can see the solar panel grabbing some sun over there. That's really good, really, really cool. Once we have more solar panels, it's going to look even cooler, being like an iconic little three solar panel setup. Can't help but notice that the magnesium is actually going down pretty quickly, and we're only building... Here, let's, let's put that in the priority there. <laughs> it's having trouble building this stuff. Let me see if it actually builds some, though. How much magnesium are we going to need? 20 magnesium for this, and the refinery is, is getting it at a rate of... Uh, not very fast. Okay, we're actually going to need to get like a, a full load of magnesium, I think. We were able to get one ammo. That's good. But yeah, we're definitely going to need to bring our truck over there and, and get some magnesium. Anyway, how are we doing with this? How many large steel tubes am I able to grab? One, two, three, and that's it. <laughs> I really like the look of these blocks, but geez, it takes up a lot of materials. Okay, finally, that's everything that we needed withdrawn. I don't think that gets us all the way there, but it gets us most of the way there, which is good. Okay, yeah, uh, let's finish up, why not? Since we're already most of the way there, might as well get all of the way there. And here we go, this should be the last of it. There's one more and the last one right there. While I'm on a welding spree, you know what? Might as well get these stairs welded up. There's a stair. Here's a stair. A third stair. And a fourth? Nope, not a fourth stair. <laughs> and a fourth stair! Alright, I like that. We did we did a pretty decent amount of welding right there, getting a lot of this stuff welded up that wasn't previously welded. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So one recommendation that I got, by the way, is that I should add a defensive module onto the base, because apparently it lets these guys target a little farther, which is something that I've heard, but I've never actually been able to tell the difference, but that's because I don't do a lot of combat, probably. Um, so the AI defensive block, we're gonna go ahead and throw one of those onto the base. It's gonna require some detector components, so I'll put those in there. And I'm gonna throw the detect uh, the uh, the AI defensive rather right there next to that guy. Okay, we've got our AI defensive up and running now. So this is going to allow our guys to target uh, things. I don't know. Do I have to? I guess I do have to turn that on. It's gonna be searching for enemies. 
Defend against enemies with subsystem. Anything with a weapon, basically, is what I'm kind of worried about. I think that's all I have to do, right? AI defensive combat, turn on the behavior and tell it that subsystems like that are what I should worry about. Um, and then hopefully if something gets close, these guys can lock on. Even though they can only shoot within about, uh, I want to say, 800 meters, they can lock on a little bit farther. All right, the final thing that I want to do in this episode is get a couple more assemblers up and running because the assembling is great, but it's a little bit slow for my liking. So we're going to throw some assemblers uh, somewhere. The thing is, this we have an assembler room here, which I'll show you in a second. Let's let's head inside so I can, I can show you what we've got going. Boom, close that and open that. There we go. So going into here, this is where our current assembler is, and we only really have room for one. I guess we could technically stick one up there, but I don't really want to. I don't think that's a good idea. So what I think I'm going to do instead is make an assembling room. Um, now in the future, not right now, but in the future, I'm going to want to have... Let's open this because we're going to go outside. I'm going to want to have sorting. So that's something that we're going to do eventually. We're going to have cargo with sorting, so things will get sorted into their spe uh, specific cargo container. Like our ingots will go into an ingot one, our ores will go into an ore one, and our you know materials will go into certain ones. Um, so I think I want to make it so that we can do that, even though we're not going to do it now. So with that said, I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn this room into our into our assembling room. I'll allow pass through this room, maybe. And that goes all the way to our power. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna come downstairs. This is probably gonna continue that way eventually, but for now, it comes into here. We're gonna give you a an entrance to this right here. So that's gonna become a door. This is gonna be a door that's gonna go all the way to our power, so we're gonna wanna keep that. And then we're gonna have a door that goes to our assembling, probably right here. So let's get some interior plates out. We're gonna bring this this way. We're going to kind of shape this hallway like this. So even though the, the, the rest of the building goes up a little higher, we're going to shape the hallway like that so that we can actually do something with this space up here. And I think this is where we're going to put sorters because we'll, we'll probably eventually have some sorters in this room. So we're going to have a rather small assembling room right here, but then we're going to have all of our sorters up here, anything that we need um, to, to, to handle up in this little area just above. So fill this area out with a couple of these blocks. So we're going to go with our normal assemblers, not the uh, the industrial ones are nice, but the problem is they take up a lot of space, which we're not really going for right now. I think we're going to set it up like this. So we're going to have our assemblers like that one, two, three, going up about that high. We're going to have our sorters in here, which are going to connect into our assembler like so. And then we actually have room to put more assemblers even in the same room. So I'll put these ones over here. And this is giving us some room. See those little small little squares on the side? Oh, it's going everywhere. Those small little squares are for modules. So you can add like a speed module or something like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave space for two modules, one on each of these sides. Uh, so then we can go one, two, three, like that. And I think that's gonna be pretty good. I like the idea of having the assemblers set up like that, but I'm gonna remove the bottommost assembler. Or maybe I'll keep the bottommost assembler for this particular one but then here i'm only going to have we'll put a block there for now i'm only going to have the two assemblers like that so we're gonna have three assemblers on that side two on that side that's going to give me room to actually enter the room and like exist in here without having the modules kind of butting into my face because they each take up one block on the side so okay i think we've got it now we're going to set it up like this three assemblers right there two assemblers right there we're gonna have a room with five assemblers total which is gonna look good I was thinking about how we want to get up here because there wasn't currently a way. Um, we'd have everything blocked off the way I was doing things, but I found this block right here, the ladder shaft, that we can use. So if I use the ladder shaft, I should be able to add this area where I can now get up here and like kind of walk around here if I need to. So ladder shaft for the win. But the room is definitely coming along. It's looking pretty nice, I think. We're gonna. It's gonna be very squarular. We'll, uh, we'll eventually come back and make this look a little bit nicer because we do need to put armor on these guys. Remember last time the Reavers attacked us. When I say last time, I mean this time. That was this episode. It's a long episode. It feels like such a long time ago. Okay, we've got one of the walls successfully done, so check it out. If you look at it just like this, it looks like it's completely done. But it's not. We actually have more. Oh, battle power! Run! <laughs> this is a red alert. 
Please, uh, okay, yeah, this is open, good. Oh man, it's so easy to run out of power on this planet. And just like that, it's back to the build. Let's get more stuff welded. Uh, like this window. Boom! How do you like that, Mr. Window? Now we can see through you. Okay, what else can we get? Uh, maybe some of these blocks right here? I think so. It occurs to me, by the way, that we're gonna need a vent somewhere. So I'm thinking, uh, well, actually, this wouldn't be a bad spot if we just throw a vent right here. I think something like that would actually work pretty well. There we go, we now have a vent. It's not sus at all. Welcome back for your update on the welding mission channel thing. We're still welding and we're about halfway through probably. Uh, we've got a lot of these. Here, I'll show you in just a second when we finish this. Okay, we're out, we're out of stuff. But yeah, we got most of the stuff welded. The top is fully done right here. Uh, a lot of those back blocks aren't done though, but we're getting most of the ceiling done as well. And we have light, <laughs> so it's looking good. Um, I was about to fly right through that window. It's a good thing I did not, but Let's look at it from an outside perspective. Yeah, so you can see there's there's still quite a few blocks here that we need to weld, but slowly but surely it's getting done and we've got our assembler working overtime. In fact, I'm wondering, should I just hook up some assemblers up here? I think maybe I should just go zoop, hook that up to right there so I have a second assembler working. I mean, we're leaving room to eventually put something like a, uh, a, a sorter up here, but for now, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna hook this up right there. I'm gonna bring this along back here, connect it up right there. And I'm only gonna weld up these ones for now. So you, you, and you. And I'm gonna weld up an assembler. So that's a full one. And here is the second one, still missing some stuff. But now that that's connected, I should be able to just middle mouse button here. Or are you not connected? I thought you were connected. Maybe we're just missing the computers. We'll, we'll throw it into production. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this assembler. This is assembler number 10. I'm going to set it to do cooperative mode. So it's going to it's going to take on some of the tasks from our other assembler. All right, I believe I have some of the last blocks here that we need. Some of it's still in production, it looks like, but uh, the entire thing is welded other than these six blocks. So there's one, there's two. Here is the third one, the fourth one. The fifth one, and we're out of interior plates, but those are the last two blocks right there. We of course have some unwelded blocks around here, but those shouldn't stop us from pressurizing this one room at the very least. So let's try and get the rest of these components here. And we're, you'll, you'll see we're lacking a lot of computers there. That's for the assembler. We're missing some silicon. So unfortunately we can't build that all the way up, but this should be one more of those done. And then the second one should be coming soon. There we go. Okay, so I think that's gonna be the entire room pressurized. Let's give it a, 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 a bit of a test. Hopping in here, we'll close the door. And that is not a pressurized, no, it is a pressurized room rather. Uh, we, we see the green light and it's starting to go up, albeit very slowly. Oh no, it's having a little trouble. Ah, you're not connected, that's why, because I need those to be built up if I want him to be connected. So actually what I'll do as well is I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and put uh, a triple one right here just so that we can have that connection. And let's see if we can connect all these, because I think that would be a good thing. There we go, another one. And we now should have a pressurizable room. Let's go ahead and close this door and check it out. Green? Yes, green. Pressurizing? Yes, but it's still having a little bit of trouble, which is weird, because we are connected right here. This does have uh, power. Maybe it's it might be glitched again or something. Depressurize on, de okay, there we go, now it's doing it, okay. This is, that's two glitches we've had with the pressurization in this episode, very strange, but we now have a, a room for assembling that is pressurizable. Now, uh, as far as the modules go, um, we're going to eventually put modules here, probably speed modules only. Um, I'm not entirely sure, I haven't really thought that through, but let, let me show you what that's gonna look like. So it's basically gonna be module there, module there, module, flip these around, right there, there, and there. So it's gonna be a little bit claustrophobic and we'll have them on, on this side as well. A little claustrophobic, but that's why I put this ladder right here so that we can, in fact, climb up this if we wanna to get to the top where it's not nearly as claustrophobic. It just takes a second to get up there. But uh, once we're up here, yeah, it's it, we've got a little bit of room. Uh, hopefully don't fall down there because you probably can't get out once you do, unless you use your jetpack. All right, the last thing I want to do before we end this episode is I think I want to close off this side of the uh, of the hallway. It's eventually going to go there, but for now it's not. We're going to weld up this entire hallway right here and we're going to make sure that it's pressurized. So for that, we're going to do probably the same thing here. I'm going to close that off right there. Or actually, here's what I'll do. If I recall correctly, we wanted a door right here. So we're going to get a, a uh, sliding door right there. 
Then we're gonna fill out some of this stuff. So we're gonna get blocks going all the way over here like that. We're gonna get them coming this way as well, all the way down like so. We're going to get these blocks up here because I'm gonna continue the same sort of design Energy. up there. And we're only doing the bare minimum so that um, so that we have it pressurized and we can say that it's pressurized. Uh, we will make it look nicer on the outside later. For the way down, we're gonna use these ramps right here to sort of bring the uh, uh, ceiling down for us. Okay, as far as it being enclosed goes, I think this is pretty good. Let's get all this stuff welded up so that we can say that it's pressurized. We'll put a door right here as well. Oh my god, as I'm building stuff here, an Incon ship called the Clanging Gremlin has appeared, and that is a scary sounding ship. <laughs> the Clanging Gremlin. I can't imagine what it what it uh what it does perhaps we'll encounter it one day but um we're, we're we're chilling inside the thing we're getting this thing done uh we are building up a bunch of interior plates we do need some silicon so i'm gonna take a trip real quick to go grab some of that um it should be just over here i know i can't really see but i'm gonna go and hope i don't smash into the tower or oh, the ground we gotta get a little bit of the silicon though because it's kind of stalling our production for uh for um computers i Cannot find where the ore hole is again, so I'm gonna go down. I'm just gonna go down, because why not? We need silicon, it's right down there. Why spend hours looking for the hole when I can simply dig another? This is the philosophy I live by. Let's uh, head straight down here, grab a little bit of silicon. Hopefully only silicon, no ice. This is a no ice zone. We're only gonna grab some of the silicon. Okay, there we go, full inventory, and we didn't have any ice, that's good. Okay, let's head on back to the base with what we've got. Now, we gotta be careful, because between us and the base is... Oh, I saw the tower on our right there, okay, so we're good. Okay, just a couple more of these angled interior wall A's, and that's gonna be the end of our interior plate saga. Now all we need are the doors, so let's get these on our build planner here. Uh, there's one right there, and there was one over here as well. Door. And we'll get those built up, if we can. They require bulletproof glass as well. I guess I'll go ahead and uh, and produce a little bit of that. You know, when it gets the chance. We don't need it right now. I can't imagine any bullets are going to come through and shoot this particular door. So let's go ahead and close that right there. Perfect. And let's get this one as well. Door. Close that. And we now have what I believe to be a pressurized hallway. Is it, though? You're still on depressurize, so let me get you on to pressurize. Yes, this is indeed a hallway that is pressurizable. Uh, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna completely break that in a second by opening something. So let's turn you back there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this connection right here, which is probably gonna remove the pressurization from the main base, but it's fine. We're, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. Okay, here's that one. Then we have one on the side there, one up there, one over here one down here, and finally this one which requires the large steel tubes. So let's head over here to our container, grab some stuff, and plop that down. Okay, so we now should be a fully pressurized base, and it looks like we do have things pressurizing. Now, it's going really slowly because I think these things are still on depressurize mode over here. So let's set them to pressurize. Yeah, you can see them trying to depressurize the base. But set them to pressurize, and you as well. And we now have a fully pressurized room. Close that, close this, and kabam. Welcome everybody to the fully pressurized base. Well, look how much base we have now. We can come in here, we can run around. There's so much like area to run around in. It goes all the way down here, comes all the way down here. I can't, I, I can't believe that we got this much base done in this episode. I, I didn't think we would get this much done uh, at the start of it. I thought we'd only build this assembler room, but we ended up getting this entire hallway pressurized, which I think looks good. We're gonna have to add lighting probably off camera or something like that. Um, it's, it's, uh, we'll do a lighting pass, make sure everything looks pretty good. But I think that is pretty awesome. Okay, let's head outside because this is where we're going to be ending the episode. We'll let our airlock cycle right here. And uh, yeah, it, it might be a bit of a long one, but I think it's a good one. We'll turn off our light. No, we won't. It's, it's very dark still. <laughs> um, we first started out with getting the solar panel over there built up, which I think turned out really, really well. It's gigantic, so gigantic that we only needed to build about half of it in order to get it to, uh, to suit our power needs. 
for now at least. We're gonna build more later. Probably next episode we'll we'll start by getting those ones built up. Uh, we were also able to, able to do lots of work on the base after the Reaver attacked us and destroyed lots of our stuff. We were able to get it all rebuilt and then, sorry it's so dark, but we were able to get a couple more weapons built up right here. And finally, we did a massive base expansion, adding on another room with a couple more assemblers. So all in all, I'd say this is a pretty eventful episode. Unfortunately, the power sources that we had at the start were lost. These towers here were, um, were, were taken down, but uh, I think the base has, has come out of it better than it was looking before. But anyways, that's where we're going to end episode number six. It was a very big building episode with a little bit of combat. Uh, next episode, we're probably going to try and focus on Pam Auto Miner and getting some auto mining solutions set up. You, can, you saw in this episode, we were already running into problems where we were kind of running out of materials. So hopefully next episode, we're going to solve that. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, if you have any comments and suggestions, post those down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. If you'd like to become a channel member, or join the Patreon. There's a link in the description, or in the case of a membership, there's a, a join button next to the um, next to the subscribe button. That'll give you some cool perks. And uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be it. So everybody, I will see you all in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival.